In this video, we're going to be taking a look at box plots, and I want you to turn your Go Math book to page 463, get out your math journal, and a pencil. Now let's take a look at the essential question, which is how can you use a box plot and measures of spread to describe a data set? So first of all, using a box plot, and you'll also see these called box and whisker plots as well. So a box plot is a display that shows how the values in a data set are distributed or spread out. So in order to make a box plot, first find five values for the data set. First of all, you need to find the least value, the lower quartile, which is the median of the lower half of the data. We'll look at that in a little bit. The median, we talked about that. That's that middle number when you line up your values in order from least to greatest. Upper quartile the median of the upper half of the data, and then also the greatest value. So those five things you need to find. So let's take a look at an example on page 463. It says the heights of several students are shown make a box, box plot for the data so we can see the student's height in inches. Step one, what you need to do is you can see on 463, order the data and find the needed values. So we order the data from least to greatest, so easy, the least value is that lowest number. Greatest value is the greatest number. So lower quartile, what we can see is it's the median of the lower half of the data. So what we do to find the lower quartile is you take the lower half of the data. So since there are 12 values, I take the six. One, two, three, four, five, six lower values, just like this. What I need to do is I need to find the median of this lower value. Now, since there's an even amount, I'm including the median. or I'm, There's not really a specific median, so I'm not leaving anything out. So six values, we can see 56 and 58 are the median, and then 57 would be the lower quartile, so the median of the lower half of the data. Now we can see the median, that's just the regular median, erase this. The regular median we can see is 59 and 60, so we add those two together, find the mean of those two, 59 and a half. Upper quartile, the median of the upper half of the data. So we can see the upper half would be the upper six values. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So the upper six values, just like this. Find the median of that, Six, so we have 61 and 62. The mean of those two numbers is 61 and a half. Now from here, we're going to draw a box plot. So we know the least value, we know the lower quartile, median, upper quartile, and greatest value. Know all those values. And so since we know all those values, we can draw a box plot. So what we can do is draw a number line that includes all the data values. So we start with the least. We can go all the way to the greatest value. You don't need to have anything less or greater than that. Then draw a number line that includes all the data values. You need to do that. And then on the number line, draw dots above the least value, lower quartile, median, upper quartile, and the greatest value. So you can see we're going to do dots above all of these. You can see right on 463, there's dots above all of them. So I'll just show you in red ink the process. So dot above the least value lower quartile, median, upper quartile, and then greatest value. Now what you do is you draw a line seg segment from the least value to the upper quartile, and then you draw a box from the lower quartile all the way to the upper quartile. You draw a line through the median, and then you connect that greatest value to the sorry, the upper quartile to the greatest value, just like that. Try to make that line a little bit straighter. So that's an example of how you draw a box plot. So now they're asking us and reflect question one. In the example on page 463, what percent of the data values are included in the box portion? In other words, what they mean the box portion is this portion right here. So 57 to 61 and a half. Okay, so we can see 57 to 61 and a half. We can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 
five, six total are included. Okay, so then we have a total of 12 numbers, so we can see that would be 50%. Now, which per, what percent are included in each of the whiskers on the ends of the box? And so what they mean by the whiskers, these are the whiskers. So this would be a whisker on the left, and this would be a whisker on the right. So what percent would be in those? So we can see from 54 to 57. So we see 1, 2, 3. And then the greatest values, 61 and a half to 65, we can see 1, 2, 3. So those would both equal 25%. Let me put the percent there for 50, and then 25% for each whisker. Now I want you to work through number two with me together. We're going to make a box plot or box and whisk whisker plot for the data in number two. So the first thing we need to do is order the data from least to greatest. So I want you to do that now. So now that we have the data ordered from least to greatest, we're going to take a look at 463 and we can see those five values that we need to find. First of all, we need to find the least value. Okay, so the least value is pretty easy. Okay, we can see 75 is our least value. Okay, and we can even write this off to the side. And you'll want to even set up something like I have right there on the screen, which will make it a lot easier to keep track of all the data that you're finding. So we can see least value, 75. Pretty simple there. Greatest value, 94. Now we need to find the lower quartile. Okay, so since we have a total of 12 numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, we use the first six numbers. Okay, so we need to find the median of those six numbers. So the median falls in between 78 and 79, so it's going to be 78 and a half. So lower quartile, 78 and a half. Now let's take a look at the median of the whole data set. So we can see the median. We're going to cross out left and right till we find two numbers in the middle. The reason why we know there's two middle numbers is because it's an even amount of data. So now we have 83 and 84. The median is going to be 83.5. Now let's find the upper quartile. I'm going to erase everything I did on my data set upper quartile, the upper six, one, two, three, four, five, six. We need to find the median of these six numbers. 88 and 89 is 89, I'm sorry, 88.5. So we found the least value, lower quartile, median, upper quartile, greatest value. Now our next step is to draw dots on the number line representing these different values. So the least value was 75, so we can see we have 70, 72, 74, so we have increments of 2. Okay, so 75 would go right above, right in between the 74 and 76. Lower quartile, 78 and a half. Okay, so we can just go a little bit to the right of that 78. You make your dot there. Median, 83 and a half. So we can see 83 would be in the between 82 and 84, so a little bit to the right of that half, halfway between 82 and 83. I mean between 82 and 84. Now let's take a look at 88 and a half. So we can see 86, this goes 88, and a little bit to the right of that 88. And now greatest value was 94, we can right above that 94. Now this is where it can get a little tricky on what to do. So what you need to do is take the least value and make a line segment connected, connecting it to the lower quartile. So I have my least value and I'm going to connect it to my lower quartile. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a box that connects my lower quartile to my upper quartile. Try to draw a little bit better than this, but you pretty much get the idea. Now what I need to do is I need to draw a line right through my median, just like that. 
and now I need to draw a line segment from my upper quartile connecting it to the greatest value. Let me make my dots a little bit larger here so you can see them. Representing all the different values. And this is how you create a box plot based upon the data that we see within number two. Now we're going to take a look at finding the inner quartile range. So we'll take what we know from box plots and apply that to finding the inner quartile range. So it says a measure of spread is a single number that describes the spread of a data set. One measure of spread is the inner quartile range. The inner quartile range, or IQR, is the difference of the upper quartile and the lower quartile. So you take the upper and lower quartile and subtract them from each other, and that'll give you the inner quartile range. So what we see here is the box plot compares the ages of dancers in two different dance troops. So we can see, first of all, the steps of this. You need to find the inner quartile for each set of data. And then in group A, inner quartile range, upper quartile minus the lower quartile. So in group A, we can see the upper quartile is 24, which is right here. Lower quartile, we can see is 20. So you subtract, subtract those two together, and that gives you an IQR, inner quartile range of 4. Letter B. We need to find the lower quartile, which is right here in my box plot, and the upper quartile. So we can see 26 and 21 and a half. Subtract those two together, that gives you 4 and a half. So now for letter B. It says compare the IQRs. How do the IQRs describe the distribution of the ages of each in each group. So we can see that the IQR of group B is slightly greater than the IQR of group A. Remember IQR interquartile range. The ages in the middle half of group B are slightly more spread out than in group A. Why do we know that? Because the IQR is greater in with B than it is with A. Let's take a look at number three. It says the box plot compares the weekly earnings of two groups of the salespeople from different clothing stores. Find and compare the IQRs of the box plot. If you need a refresher on how to do this, you can rewind the video. But if you think you're good, what I would like you to do is work on number three. And I want you to find and compare the IQRs of the box plots. I want you to work on this now. Now we can see you may not have everything written down, but group A IQR is $700. Group B IQR is $450. So group A's IQR is greater, so the salaries in the middle 50% for group A are more spread out than those for group B. Okay, so that's what, hap that's what you can see when you're comparing the interquartile range of two different sets of data or two different box plots. So now we're going to take what we know, we're going to take a look at finding the range. Now, another measure that describes the spread of a data set is the range. And the range is the difference of the greatest value and the least value in a set of data. So what we have here, example number three, it says the data set shows the ages of the players on two professional baseball teams. Find the range of each data set. So the first thing that you need to do for A and B is you need to arrange the data set in order from least to greatest. It's very important to do that. And then after we do that, you want to find the range of the data. And you need to locate the least value from the and you need to locate the least value and the greatest value in each data set. So we can see the greatest the least value in A is 21, greatest value is 39. So you subtract those two for T and B. Greatest value is 31, least value is 21, so you subtract those two. So we can see the range for team A is 18, team B is 10. So you just take the least and greatest value, find the difference of those two, and that will give you the range. So we can say, see that the range of ages for team A is 18 years, while the range of ages for team B is 10 years. Again, what the range will do for you, it'll show you how spread out your data is from the least value to the greatest value. What I would like you to do now is number four on your own. 
and I'd like you to find the range of each set of data and figure out which city's data has a greater range. So work on this independently. I'd like you to work on this now. So we can see the range for Miami is 15, the range for Chicago is 53, and we can see that the greatest range is Chicago, seeing that it has 53. Now what I would like you to do is numbers 1 through 7 on this, where what you're doing is you're ordering the data from least to greatest. You're looking at the Mariners RBIs. Okay, so we can see that data on the right side. I want you to order them from least to greatest, find the median, lower quartile, upper quartile. You need to make a box plot for the data, find the inner quartile range, and also find the range. So it's kind of putting this whole entire video together for numbers one through seven. So I want you to work on this independently. And pause the video now. Okay, so I would like you to check your answers with mine for numbers 1 through 7. If you're really confused about anything that we're going over, you can rewind the video. But the key part is with this box plot, we can see that first dot is the, the least value. That second dot we can see is the lower quartile. That dot with a line through is the median. The dot on the right of that box is the upper quartile and that final dot all the way to the right is the greatest value. So we can see the IQR, the range for numbers 1 through 7. Now let's wrap up the video. It says how is the range of a set of data different from the IQR? And the range of a set of data is the difference of the greatest and least values in the data set. The IQR is the difference of the upper and lower quartiles. Now this concludes the video on box plot if you box plots if you have any questions about this concept please come and see me